Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to Safran Seikat's voiceover talk show. Um, as always, my name is Giz Ojiako, and I am your director for programs for Safran Seikat. It's amazing to be here again today. Um, another midweek Wednesday on the back of our topic that we finished last week. Um, I do remember telling everybody that um, um, we will be following up on last week's amazing um, GCSE and A-level results. Um, but before we dwell into that, I would like to um, welcome those of you who are live on Facebook with us this evening. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, as we pro progress, I know more people will be joining. So please, let's make allowance for that. In the meantime, I will be asking my boss to please unveil um, and introduce herself. It's just the two of us anchoring today, um, but we will be letting you know um, about the rest of the team as, as we go on. So after you, Yemi, if you'd like to um, unmute. Okay. Hello, 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 everyone. Good evening. Yes, it is my very self, Yemi Abulu Iyintari, and um, we welcome you to our program this evening. Amazing, amazing, amazing. There's been so much going on um but it is good to have um for you to have us in your space so like we always say it is um good afternoon somewhere in the world good morning and good evening somewhere else it's a global village and it's a wonderful place to be at the moment so um please 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 um i will be definitely anchoring on facebook as always speak with me um, give me your comments, give me your questions. Let's talk. Let's help somebody today and lift somebody up. Have a good one. Thanks, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that, Yemi. And we would like to just say an amazing welcome back to our own Auntie Vicky, who we have really missed. Um, Auntie Vicky is um, one of our trustees and, you know, an, an integral member of the Seika Saffron family. Um, so Auntie Vicky, it's amazing to have you back. You know, with everything that is going on in the world, when you don't hear or see, please reach out, look for, look for people. You know, we really do need to be there for each other. So it's lovely to have you back Auntie Vicky and we hope that you are going to enjoy the show this evening. <laughs> Thank you, it gives me great pleasure to join you. I'm sorry, I haven't been um, <clears throat> available this last few weeks. I have been very bogged. That's the word. Yeah. Personal yeah. issues. Yeah. I'm not going to um, bother you with details, but yeah. my thoughts are always with you. Thank, thank, thank you, you very much for having me back. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you, thank you. Um, and so, without much ado, um, my Facebook family. Yemi will definitely be your anchor tonight. So as we progress, please, any questions, any statements, please feel free to type on Facebook and they will definitely be passed on to myself um, and we will take any questions. You know, um, like we say, we are all on board here to give you support, guidance um, and advice around every and any program that we pull up. Um, so yes, today, Results day. GCSEs and A-levels um, were completed and results came out last week. Um, and we just thought, you know, we want to look at the way forward. But before we go ahead, we want to say a massive, massive congratulations to those of you who did it. Those of you who scaled, those of you who passed, you know, it's been amazing because the last one year has been crazy as we all know with COVID-19 and the pressure and the young folks, you know, um, education was turned on its head, definitely. So for you guys to have hung in there and put yourselves out there and got the results that you've got, you know, kudos. You know, it's an, a wonderful, it's a wonderful achievement. We are so proud of you. I know your families are very proud of you. Um, and in saying that, you know, I still want to do a shout out to those who did not meet the grades. Okay. So we have, we're still high. I'm not going from a high to a low because why? They are grades. Um, and I probably get lynched for saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyway, grades don't make you. 
No, they don't yeah. define your life. They do not define you. Mm -hmm. um, it's a system. It's a system that you have to go through. Education is, you know, part of that system. If you did not get the required grades, please stay tuned to the show um, as we cover for the next three weeks, we will be covering pathways, other pathways you can follow. Um, and the point here is what? It's not the end of the world. It's not for you to go away and cry for the next couple of months, weeks. Um, I shared a story last week when I did my GCSEs. Um, and I'm, I'm proudly saying, and some people are gonna probably say, is she, is she proud? Yes, I am, because I'm sat here today, a director of a company. But when I took my first GCSEs, I didn't pass. You understand? So I don't want our young people or our parents to put that burden on our young people. We will support you. We will guide you. But it's not the end of the day. So please stay tuned and listen out to how and where we can carry you forward and take you on different paths um, after your GCSEs and A-levels. And for those of you who were able to pass through clearing and get your university spots, a massive congratulations to yourselves as well. Um, it's a very massive milestone. It's another world you're all stepping into. Um, and we just want to say we're here to support you and your families um, every step of the way. So yes, exams. Ooh, so um, as we all know, there was no actual exams uh, sat during the, the pandemic. They couldn't have been because everybody was in lockdown, okay. Um, and then we also had last year that controversial Ofcol, which Ofcol, which is the body that regulates um, the exams, and, and they brought out that algorithm, which basically saw people failing up and down. And the good old government stepped up and scrapped it. And then decided what's going to happen going forward is the grades were going to be determined by the teachers. Okay, the so teachers marked, you know. Uh, the, 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 the assessments, um, the, the results were based on the coursework and it was evidence-based and this is what the teachers um, marked and then it was subject to internal quality assurance checks before it was passed to an exam board. Um, then the, grade, the grades then got signed off by heads of department and the central and the heads of um, the department for, for education and the different centers. Now, um, the mock exams that were taken by students were also used. They were, a fa they were factored in to the results. So, it, it, you know, it begs the question, um, you know, I've had the opportunity to speak to quite a few youth. I did ask some of them to come on today. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, as, as the show goes on, we will have some of them pop up because it would be an amazing thing to hear from them, you know, the, the process, you know, what, how they, from the, the, from the COVID pandemic up until results, it would be amazing to hear from them, to hear from the horse's mouth, the process, what they went through, you know, were their challenges, was it easy? Because, you know, some of them sailed through it, some didn't, um, and it would be nice for us to hear from um, the, 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 the young people. So if you do have any of your children and you're watching with us now, um, please, 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 um, you know, ask them to come on. You know, they don't have to come on with their faces. Like we always say, they can be behind camera, but it would be lovely to hear their experiences. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about the way forward, yeah? Whether they were positive results, there is nothing like a negative result. Um, one major thing that came into my mind when listening to some parents during the week when we were doing our research is, do parents actually understand the grading system? Mm. We know that in 2017, the grading system changed from alphabetical um, to numerical. So if I was to ask some of the parents, if your child came home with a four, would you know what that was? If your child came home with a nine, do you know what the nine stands for? You know, it is very important as parents to understand and to get involved um, with this. It's not enough for you to hear how many GCSEs did you get? You know, you need to understand the grading system because you could be telling your child off for getting a C, but that was a very high C, mm. you know? So it's important that we understand 
the grading system, that we do not take into, um, um, we do not get complacent, um, you know, and, and that way we can then understand, you know, where, where, where the child probably needed a little bit more help a little bit more support because going forward, like I said, GCSEs and A-levels are not the end, the be end all. There are other exams coming up you know, ahead. So we need to be able to sit down with these young people and understand um, the process. Welcome Omoti, it's lovely to see you all the way from Ireland. I'm sure some of our kings and queens from 4Gs will be joining us shortly as they always do. You guys are awesome, amazing. Um, we're talking about the GCSEs um, and the A-levels, which um, the results came out last week and we've had successes, but in everything, you know, we would also have situations where some people did not get the required grades. Um, there is a situation that I, I stumbled across last week and that was of a student who had made two A-stars and then he got, I think it was a C or a D. So the university of his first choice did not take him because the third one was not, um, the third A level did not re meet the required standard. Um, you know, so I, I want us to have a conversation around that, that kind of a, that child, how would we be able to support that young person? You know, um, two A stars, and then you get a D, and then you start thinking, well, the, the, the gap between the first two results and the last two, how do we balance? How do we, um, if anybody has um, anything they wanna add or they wanna say about that, because that threw me, you know, I, I wouldn't know if that had happened to my child, how I, would, how I would be able to console the child, you know, or to make the child understand, you know, that it wasn't what they did. Hi, Omuti, go ahead. Oh yeah, good evening. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Oh, good. Um, if it does, the child happened to be my, maybe my son, for example, and um, the first choice did not take him due to the mark. Mm -hmm. Um, to me it's okay. I will have a, an open conversation with my son yeah. to let you know that he has tried his best. Mm -hmm. That is one of those things in life, and I will ask him. So I will support him by listening actively to my son and also to encourage him and ask him to, to really know his dis, um, desired state of mind, yeah. what he wants to do, you know. I will leave the conversation to him in my own way. And if he tell me this is what he wants to do, or maybe to repeat, to retake it again, mm -hmm. or to go for the second choice. But mainly, I'm going to listen to him and ask him what you want to do for him first. And that's okay. the way I will handle it as a parent, because I wouldn't force anything on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that, that makes absolute sense. You know, we've always said on this show that, you know, we need to do more of listening to our young people so that we understand what is it in their hearts and in their minds. And as parents, you know, we all have, desires for our children and sometimes those desires can tend to push us to put our um, projections on the child and and I think or the young person and I think from what you're saying Omoti is you know you would want to listen to what the child is thinking about and based on the child's thinking then offer the guidance and support as a parent that you 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 could do um, and that makes absolute sense um and I think that is that is in this period, especially where you probably have some young people who are so devastated, you know, it, it, it would be now is the time for a parent to actually be a listener. You know, um, it's, I think at this stage, it's too late to be saying to the child, well, I want you to do this, especially after after results have been, you know, um, released. It should be more of a listening. OK, you know, tell me, talk to me about how you feel, talk to me about, you know, what, what, where do you feel you want to go from here? You know, some, some, some of these kids have taken these GCSEs and it's not what they want to do. So they don't want, now some of them don't want to go to the university. Some of them don't want to continue the A-levels. So it's, it's, it's important that we listen to them. You know, like we, like I said, when we started, there are other pathways um, to a successful um, destination. 
um, and it's it's about listening to the to the young people and working with them. Um, so yes, I don't know if we have any um, thing from Facebook, but before we do, I don't know, Auntie Vicky, I don't know if you have anything that you would like to add um, in relation to this topic. Um, with my own experience, when my daughter did her levels, with she's passed GCSE, mm -hmm. her results were, was disappointing in the sense that she didn't make the grade she wanted for the course she wanted to do. Sure. I was working at the time, so I didn't even see her. So she took the decision after talking to her teachers and they said to her that she was determined to do the course, which is pharmacy. She had to go back and redo her CSEs. But this girl, that decision, I came home. She said, Mom, I'm sorry I've disappointed you. I said, What do you mean? And she said, My result is not as good as I had anticipated. So she went to a college, restart her PCSC, did it in one year. She had the best results in the school. Wow. So she went to uni and did her pharmacy. What I've learned from here is similar to what Omote said. We don't push them. My own case, I wasn't even there, nor was the father. We were both working. She went to pick up her result. This is what happened. And this is what she decided to do for herself. We made it clear to her that no matter what decision she took, we were going to be supportive of her. So, so we supported her while she was reseating. And she was very happy with herself. And it was the same university she wanted to go to. She went, but the only thing is she lost a year. Yeah. Yeah, she said practicing pharmacies. So yes, I agree with you that we don't, I think one problem we Africans have, African parents have is that we want our children to be doctors. We want them to be lawyers. We want them to be, uh, what's the other one? Doctor, lawyer. Or engineers. Engineers. The other one is um, accountants. Accountants, like accountants. yeah. But if the child doesn't want to do it, then sit down with them, listen to them. We are all gifted differently. What sure. I can do, somebody else cannot do it, and vice yeah. versa. Exactly. So I think this is what we need to be telling our fellow parents about their children. There's no such thing as disappointing or failure yeah. because even if they go to see um, a career advisor to point them in another direction and give them you know a whole host of things they can do and then it's up yeah. to them whether they want to change course or go back to study or whatever yeah the decision should be the child's not the exactly. parents Awesome, that is uh, spot on. I can't argue with yourself, Auntie Vicky, or you, Omoti, that is spot on, you know. I've always said it has to be the child's decision. Um, I, and, 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 and when you think about it, you know, um, we're not going to read for the child. We're not going to be, take the exams. So if my child says they want to be, um, um, you know, um, a nurse and I am pushing for you to be a lawyer, I need to understand that I will not be the one studying that law degree. So putting that on the young person when it's not their path, is not their calling, is setting them up for failure long before they even. And sometimes it's not even that you're setting them up for failure because sometimes they probably have the capacity to do that course, but it's not the point, that is not their passion. Okay. These are two things. Sometimes it's not about the child cannot, they probably can, and they'll probably scale through as a lawyer, but that is not the passion. And I think this is where, as we, and you rightly said, you know, I think it is with the African culture, and it's because of sometimes the way some of us were raised, you know, we do push these kind of things on our young people. Um, and then we talk about mental health and we wonder where it's come from. And that's when you're putting untold pressure on a brain that cannot handle it. So, you know, yeah, I, I, I really think, you know, as a community, we need to look out for each other 
um, we need to stop pointing the fingers. It's not a competition that my child doesn't go to the university and your child goes to the university. It doesn't matter, you know, and we've got to stop with the competition because I think that's where, Omati, your hand is up again. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Thank go you. Um, I forgot to add something while I was talking. Mm -hmm. um, I want to encourage parents out there. I've been in that um, bus before. Mm -hmm. um, for example, we should try to balance it for our children when it comes to the subject they study in school. We have to monitor their progress, you know, on a timely basis, whatever they feed you during the result, monitor them. Yeah. For example, for my um, one of my son, I notice I'm trying for him to breed up um, his mathematics up, you yeah. know, but up to the moment, I noticed that it has not been really impressive for me, right. the way right. I wanted it to be. So now it will be doing its living search next year. So what I did now, I balanced both. I look at the one that is scoring higher mark. Yeah. So, so my son came in one day, he said, mom, my math, I'm going to do lower level. I said, why? He said, I don't think I can go for higher level, you know? Before I would like, oh no, you have to do it. But now, from the experience I've learned from the first brother, I knew that one was very good in all Randa and all the subject. So I'm encouraging all the parents out there, try and monitor the progress of their children every time, know where they are good, know where they are lagging behind. So together with my son, we agree. On your mass, you're going to do lower level. So we should try to balance it and monitor their progress. Yes. Very important. Thank you. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Yes, I, I love the balance. Yeah. Yemi, can I ask you to add something? Yeah. Um, I was just um listening to Omati and um what she said was really um, you know, very true. Um, the fact that we can't wait till results day to then start um firefighting. Um, coming up to that time, we need to, to continue, you know, engaging with them, asking them questions, how they're doing, what do they want to do, get involved in career week. You know, these this young people have um, career options evening and, and um, um, programs like that, that the schools put up so that they can decide on what they want. Many times, I know I, I've been to actually nearly all of mine but many times you see young people who's who don't have their parents with them you know and they have to make these decisions on their own um i remember um with one of my sons and the history teacher we had the history teacher and i think a geography teacher we had three teachers campaigning and he had to choose which one <laughs> And the teachers literally stand in their campaigning to say, we want you to come to us. You, you can do this with this. You can do that with that. Um, but when you have a child that doesn't have that extra support and, and, and direction, and then they end up choosing things that they, they're not, um, they don't have a clear direction on. So it is very important. And if you know young people need extra help, it is good to start early. There is nothing that that stops a child improving um, on, on whatever they have. It's just identifying the need for the help and putting it in there earlier than, than later. Thank you, Moti, for bringing that up. It's very important. We need to engage more in our, in our children's learning right from, you know, when they get into um, secondary school, a lot to be honest with you even when my god and i was believing oh okay i don't have to be running after you all the time you know the school runs and all of that yes but funny enough they still do need that support you might not be on top of them like we were in primary school but um we still need to be in there um asking them questions engaging mm -hmm. with them and not just with their studies especially they're they're very vulnerable to a lot of um um social uh interventions to to a lot of you know the, the 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 people that surround them um it's very important that we continue to keep an eye on them exactly Th thank you so much um um for that yemi i like when you talked about the you know like the parents evening and the, when they had the career and honestly i was opportune to actually attend one many years, not many, but a few years ago uh, with one of mine. 
And what struck me was that as we sat there, the Korean person was greeting my son and said, oh, hello, and I'm looking. They were not familiar. And that worried me and I'm sitting there looking and I looked at both of them and I'm, he said, oh, this is my first time of meeting you. So I said, so why are we here? So you see why it's important because somebody was about to give career guidance to a young person they knew nothing about. They had not seen him before, not met him before. If I had not sat with him, he would have had to attend by himself and probably taken advice about his mm. own career from somebody who doesn't understand. And so when we sat there, I didn't say anything. And so the young man, the man was asking, so what do you want to do? You know, um, and I said, what? And then I, I interjected and I said, excuse me, can I ask, what do you know about this young man? You know, and do you know what's, do you know about his strengths, his weaknesses? So what, based on what, what are you using as a yardstick to give him career advice. And he told, he was brutally honest. He said, I'm gonna be very honest with you. We don't have the resources to be in the schools with them. So you see, as parents, we have to be intentional. Yes. If you want your children to, 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 you know, to grow, if you want to, don't rely on the schools. It's not, it's, 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 they, they are teachers. We are the parents. So, you know, if it's very important, you're attending from primary school, up until when they finish, it's very important you are attending all these meetings so that you sit there and you listen. You know, you know when your child is not doing well, you know the subjects that they are weak in so that you don't encourage them to take them in GCSEs. Why would you do that? Why would you encourage them to take them? So these are the things that we need to look out for um, as, as parents um, and to make sure that we're there to stand in the gap for our children. Yeah, and young people. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's just what I, it came into mind when you when you said what you said about the attending the parents' evenings and the career guidance. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's that was just what I, it, it just came to me and I thought I'd need to put it out there. Oh, we have, well, good evening. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. She crept in a while ago. She's okay. Give me silence to tonight. <laughs> she's you, muted. She's our muted. education okay. is all the way from Nigeria. So yes, can I ask you to unmute and lend your voice if you're still there? No. Okay. It would be nice to hear what's going on across the waters regarding. I don't know if they finished. I think some of them are starting their own. Uh, Wayek is it? Wayek yeah. Is the, the, yeah. It'd be good to, to um have an idea. Yeah. Um, about the schools, you know what? It's been a long time. They have grown from there's jam, there's wayek, there is um Neko. Yeah, yeah. Got... <laughs> What's the answer? What else? They have so many examination boards. I feel really sorry for the children out there. You're muted, Giz. Can't hear you. Sorry, I did that. Yes, I said they have quite a lot of different exams and Exam boards. I know there's NECO, there's WIAC, there's so yeah. NECO, WIAC, JAM. Um, maybe um, somebody will join us from, from Nigeria to enlighten us on that. But um, here we have the um, GCSEs and then we have the, um, after the GCSEs, what's the next one? AS, and A levels. Yes, yes. The A levels. A -levels. And, the, and the A levels. Um, and it's um, your GCSEs get you into secondary, into A levels, and then you have the A levels that get you into university. Yes. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. That's okay. right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I'd like to ask a question, if I may. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, go ahead. Has anyone used this uh, mentorship scheme? Yeah. When you say what when, when you say, say what do you mean mentorship yeah, scheme? Enlighten us. <laughs> what I mean by that is some children would need a bit of support. Something like um what do you call it role? Um role model. Yeah. And then introduce them to the mentorship scheme 
somebody who is already established in the area they want to go into mm -hmm. will befriend them. Okay. And then sort of give them an insight. It helps them to think it through. Is this really what I want? I do it or can't I? Or on the other hand, to give them the encouragement. Yes, this is what I want. They go for it. Okay. I haven't used it myself, but I've heard of people who've used it. And, and I how think, long is the mentorship um, for? Honestly, I don't know. I know it's part of this uh, Prince, Prince's Trust scheme, projects and schemes. What trust? Prince. Oh, the Prince's Trust. Trust. The Prince's, Prince's Trust. Trust. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm. okay. Wow. Well, I'm definitely going to be looking that up. Because I also know that um, I'm, I'm not very um, 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 conversant with that. I haven't heard about that. But actually, it's like, um, it's like um, an apprenticeship, isn't it? Not really apprenticeship in the sense that young person will not be working okay. under them and earning money. No. Yes. It's just a case of somebody to bounce off ideas. Okay. Okay. To my understanding. Okay. And um, there was a time they did it for children from less privileged uh, background. Oh, yes. I remember that um, yeah. there was a young, young guy that went into the city um, and um, sort of I, I, I call it hung around because yes, they weren't really working, but they 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 were around the people who deliver in that work and seeing how how they deliver the work, how they get on, and then mm -hmm. decide if that is what they want to do. Exactly. If that's the same thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I remember that. I think a lot of that happened with um um the city 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 groups. You know, people who work exactly. in the city mm -hmm. um to try and get the the yes to try and get the um, more ethnic people into the the white is it white that's color? right what? something like something yeah. like that you know so if the reason why I'm bringing this up is if we have a parent who probably doesn't know where to go mm -hmm. how do we sign yeah, poster we do? Do we post them? that's right yeah, that'd be a this good idea kind of yeah, people the only who will help her to yeah. For him to progress. Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I, I will find out. I'll find out more about that and, um, and then come back to you with it and see if it is still something that people can access. Okay. Because there are a lot of programs at the moment. There are, all, are a lot of um, apprenticeships that are available, uh, apprenticeship programs. Okay. Uh, yes, that are available. Um, a lot of... Um, most of the boroughs have apprenticeship programs. Um, and I also know that the government has the kickstart program, but mm -hmm. the apprenticeship programs uh, are getting them to, to learn on the job. And right. as they learn on the job, then they, they actually then um, are, the plan is to offer them those jobs that they've learned maybe over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they, they learn to then assimilate them into posts. So those are one. But then there are also a lot of vocational um, programs out there to, um, to be able to learn. Like we started with saying not everybody has to be in that is it white collar, blue collar job. Yeah, white color, white blue, color, blue, <laughs> white color, blue, green, whatever. <laughs> but not everyone has to be in that role because there are a lot of jobs that if people didn't do them i'm so sorry the people in those blue collar jobs would, would not be able to um you know manage their their own lives yes they yeah. it might be okay to sit in the office and do things but there are there are a lot of um um jobs that are, that get done by people who are not degree holders but they're excellent at their jobs and they're thriving yes. at their jobs mm -hmm. there are entrepreneurial businesses that are growing so quickly now um and nothing stops you starting your own business you know you might not want to go through the, the three years but that in in uni but that doesn't mean that you don't have a passion 
that you can use to grow into a business. So um, while I'm saying that, I'm going to take us um, to just watch a short video and I hope I have it open and, and ready. And that is the, oh, okay. Um, just give me a, a, a moment to find out where, where that is. And that is the video um, about our famous, um, our famous, what's his name? Facebook, Facebook guy. What's the, what's his name again? Giz. Um, who is that we're talking about now? Facebook. Um, Mark, Mark. Oh. Yes, so um, just bear with me while I share his video, um, because, you know, if we we don't have any example whatsoever, we have Max Zuckerberg and to see the success that he made out of. Yeah, we're not saying, you know what, I go to uni, have a backup, but not everybody can be you know, can be the judge. <laughs> some some of us have got to be the jury. So, yes. <laughs> so I'm just going to share his video. I got started. Brennan, you have to remember, I was 19 years old when I started oh, Facebook. Right? With so, me. I, I mean, probably like the, the same day you got her. And, um, Oh. Can you hear it? It's a bit low, but very faint. Very faint. And yeah. he talks so fast as well. So bear yes, he does. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's the highest I can get us. Okay. Let's try if we can hear him. But we can read what he's saying as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. He starts with, I knew nothing. So he started with, he got nothing. I nothing when I got started. Right, I mean, you have to remember, I was 19 years old when I started Facebook, right? So I, I mean, probably like the, the same age or younger than, than most of you guys. And um, I knew nothing, nothing about business at all. So many things go wrong when you start Facebook. And the key role is, you know, what mistakes uh, should you avoid making? And, you know, my answer to that question is don't even bother trying to avoid mistakes because you're going to make tons of mistakes, right? And the important thing is actually learning quickly from whatever mistakes you make and not giving up. Yeah, I think we got that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he was basically trying to say that one, he was 19 when he started. He knew nothing about business. Um, and hey the guys, rest is history. Call by the title of this video. Nope. Actually, before I do anything. The rest is um, history Please, because. This video. Sorry about that. Yeah, the rest is just history because we know, you know, the success of Facebook. So I think, you know, in a nutshell, we, we apologize for the audio. But obviously, these are videos that Saffron doesn't make. We, we, we get them off. But what we could possibly do is probably share the link um, on, on Facebook and you can listen to it yourselves. But he, it, it was a very short clip. But, but what I gathered from it is he's saying, you know, you don't need to know about a business before you start a business. Mm. Um, and I know that he also said that um, people ask, what if, well, what if you're going to make mistakes? What kind of mistakes did yes. he said? Forget yes. it. Forget what the mixed mistakes that I made. Everyone's going to make mistakes when you start a sure. business. It is sure. learning very, very quickly. And I like the way he used the word very quickly from very, those very mistakes. Quickly. And don't get, you know, one dog in, in that box down. Mm -hmm. learn from it and move on yeah you know and i think there's a phrase that we we tend to use a lot in, in at is way forward you way know? forward the the life, life is, if you stand still everything else will pass you by sure once you identify there there there, there is a there's an issue there is a problem find the solutions to it and way forward yeah um learn from it obviously and and then find a solution and then move forward so, yes. Well. And whilst we're on it, we're talking about different pathways for our young people. And I'm hoping that we have, I'm hoping that we have um, entrepreneurs on there, mm -hmm. um, on here rather, people who have their own businesses, or if you have family that have their own businesses, 
there's something that we need to stop doing as a people. And we need to stop saying to our young people, you don't have experience. I can't take you on. You don't have experience. Because if we are asking them to seek alternatives to uh, GCSEs and A-levels, like Mark Zuckerberg at the age of 19, starting to set up his own business, we need to take them seriously, okay? They can't have experience if they are not given a chance. So please open your doors. I remember when we came out of school, I know things have changed drastically because of legislation and there's a lot of political correctness, but we can still have them in our offices doing admin. You know, um, there are little, little things we can ask the young people to do um, and which will help them build up their experience and get them ready for the bigger platforms, the bigger stages out there. Apprenticeships, we mentioned, you've got the foundation degree. Um, if they don't get what, what they want um, after the uh, GCSEs. Entry level jobs, which is what we're talking about. And obviously self-employment, you know, which is something that they, they I, I would encourage um, because it's a stepping stone. And once they've stepped on these stones, nothing stops them from going back to the university. Some, some of us have gone back to university much, much, much later on in our lives. And it, it's not taking any skin off our noses. If anything, it's, I think people enjoy it much later because there's a better understanding. There's a lot more maturity. Um, but yeah, for our young people, we do need to encourage them um, positively. And the more we push them away is the more we create that, that hole of inexperience. Nobody is going to get experience unless you give them a chance. So that's what I wanted to put out there. And I, I, I like the fact that you talked about mentoring, um, Auntie Vicky, because if you don't mentor them, you know, um, how do they grow? You know, everybody needs a buddy. And the mentorship is what actually gives you that, you know. Um, I remember I was 16 and this was, this was actually in Nigeria. And I actually was given a chance to work in an office. And I was, I was sent to a lady's office and I will never forget this. I would never forget this because this is what I think about and it drives me every single day. And all I did is I saw this lady in her pink suit, the way she signed her signature, it blew my mind away. And from that day, all I wanted was my pink suit and I went home to learn the signature. Oh my gosh, till day I learned my signature and you know, Every time I went into an office and you know, all I wanted to do was I wanted to have my own. And you see that, that push, that drive, and you heard what Mark Zuckerberg said about the mistakes. Forget the mistakes. The more mistakes you learn is the greater you will be because once you make that mistake once, twice, right. you will never make that mistake again. But when you have that fear of failure, that is when we have a problem. And I think parents, we as individuals, parents, carers, guardians, teachers, if we have teachers on here, listen, we need to prepare our children for failure. We're not doing that. Everybody isn't going to succeed. Let's stop selling that false narrative. Some of us are going to fail. I failed my driving test. I must have taken my driving test about 30 times and I tell you no lie and failed, yeah? Did I stop? No. I'm sure DVLA will see my name and say, oh, auntie is here again, you know? But did it stop me? No. And I'm a very good driver. I've been driving for 20 something years. The point I'm trying to make is let failure not be a deterrent. Don't knock your child on the head when they don't do so well, okay? We need to be able to encourage them even when they're not doing so well. Not everybody was born to be a winner. No, we want you to be a winner. I'm telling you that now. But was, were we all born to be? No, no, no. But we do want, and we do want to push you to be there. But we've got to do it in such a way that we don't affect your mental health. It's very important that we put this out here because our last programs was all about our young people and their mental health. And now that these results have come out, we are thinking we need to have this conversation. We need to let the young people know that we are here for them as an organization, their families are there for them 
and can I be honest with you, some families are not going to be there for them because there's just this, there's this thing in some families where you, you make it, you pass or you pass out, you know, and we've got to try and step in the gap for those, um, for, for those young people to let them know that it might not be your family, but, you know, organizations like Saffron um, are here to, to support you um, and give you guidance. Um, so I just hope that um, um, that gets across. Omoti, you said Wura is on and Wura has something that she would like to add. Is that correct? You're on mute, Omoti. Yeah, Wura, are you, are you on? The, did you want to add something? I know I saw in the chat. Uh, Okay, so you you have some that's doing school leaving certificate. Are you are you there, Wura? Are you are you able to lend um, a voice to 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 the tonight's conversation? We're talking about A levels and GCSEs. Okay, uh, Wura, uh, if you are there. Okay, she's there. hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Sorry for coming in late. No, that's fine. Good evening. It's nice to have you on board. It's beautiful to have yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. uh, from the little I could pick from the conversation, mm -hmm. uh, as you have said, one thing I noticed at our end here, most uh, school living certificate uh, students, even after the exam, most of them don't have anything doing. And those who have won a uh, little business or the other that they are running, as you are saying, let us believe in these children. We adults with the society does not believe in them. They don't, they don't. I, I see so many, even so many of them at this point in time, one little, like my daughter, she has a little business also. This issue of uh, air, so many of them sell air products online, but uh, let, let's give them a push. Let's give them a push. So not just the living certificates, thank God for that. Even after, let, let, let entrepreneurs, let parents, let organizations take them in. They don't do that. They don't do that at this end at all. I was even sharing with her that even the so-called graduate find it very difficult being absorbed, not now saying uh, students after the first living uh, their school certificate, they don't take them in. So, so many of them wonder about they wonder about. But I know that one, two, three people, they are trying to help them in the issue of the technology now, uh, giving them a chance, maybe letting the coding classes, programming classes. But the, at the same, you still see some of them who are interested in this business. They have these, they are uh, online businesses. Let's encourage them. They should be encouraged, not just left alone. Uh, not saying they don't have the experience. They should start help them to start from uh, somewhere. They should start from somewhere. Then with the current exam, thank God for WAEC. Uh, we just, mm. we, are, we are used to it. I think we are used to it in this part of the world. I don't think a, a, an exam is a measure of a, a child's IQ or brilliance or intelligence. I don't think so. Then, uh, uh, because I don't know, maybe it's after the pandemic or the situation in the country, I have we discovered even most of those children, they don't want to read again. Most, if, if, you, if you leave one, two or three of them, they prefer not even writing the exam. They don't want to. Mm. They don't want to. They don't want to write the exam. They don't want to do exams again. And it has created one, uh, is it laziness? It has created an avenue even for cheating. Mm. That one is there. Yeah, it's there. So the, the few ones who are interested in business, let's encourage them. Sure. Their online businesses, let's encourage them. And the organizations who can absorb them also, even after mm -hmm. the exam, let them absorb them so that they can keep uh, them going. We can encourage them. Because as you said, it's not every one of them is uh, academic oriented. Not all of them, but it's good at, at least. Yes, they should have yeah. a background, but not all of them. So we should encourage, we should encourage them. We should awesome. encourage them. Yes. Thank you so thank, thank you. you so much for that, Wura. Yeah, you made a lot of sense. Uh, Bola, Bola, Les, got, you've got your hand up. I'm going to ask you to unmute. We were looking for you earlier on. 
you disappeared and now you've reappeared. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, it's good to be back again. Yes. <laughs> good to have you back. Yes. Um, I, I just listened to Wura and I listened mm -hmm. to um, the other yeah. speakers. Um, I just want to quickly add on that, you know, it, what we're discussing tonight is very true and very real in practice. Um, I want to chip in on what Wura said last. And <laughs> what I just wanted to say is that, yes, it's true that these children do not want to write exams. However, what we're doing right now is to um, retract on the teaching method to make teaching more practical rather than just um, the exam preparatory um, tendencies that we have done with teaching in the past. Then another thing that we, 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 we're hoping to project, I'm, 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 I'm speaking from Nigeria. So another thing that we're seriously hoping to project in Nigeria is, um, um, well, I don't know, you have a lot of that in the UK and in developed con in Western con 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 countries. So what we're trying to project is a situation where the, where the students after the GCSE or YEC can go to colleges, institutes, um, to do whatever they want to do. And this can only be, you know, brought about by professionals. Professionals need to come together and set up models for, for such trainings. For instance, um, you, you, you may not go to the university to become um, an expert in dealing with children with disability. There can just be an institute where you go directly to, to study that and study different aspects of it. You, you don't need to go to the university to study um, what other course now do we, we okay, I, I have a, 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 a child right now who doesn't want to go to the university and all he wants to do is just work in a hotel. So what we're doing now is we're looking out for an institute where he can just go and study everything in, in the hotel and be a hotelier. Do you get it? Because that's what he wants to be. So we, we professionals in this Nigeria <laughs> must come must together, come together in, the, in the hotel and be a <laughs> must come together to set up, you, the, we look beyond your profession. There are several aspects. I'm an educator and I, I know that there are several aspects to education that we need. You, you, it's only if you want to be in the academics that you can go to the university. But if you really want to go into those aspects, it is the practice that you need and you just must go to institutes to study that. So I think we should start looking at do, that, that, do those um, areas. That's um, just what I want to say. So we don't need to do um, excess exams and all that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Well, thank you so much, Aguilola. That is, you know, that is spot on. You know, I think we were having this discussion and we were like, you know, vocation. You know, um, I remember growing up then in Imo State and we had GTC, the Government Technical College. Um, and these colleges need to come back, you know, um, we need to put back the emphasis because the workforce is waning and the workforce is waning because we do not have the, 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 the bodies. Um, you said, um, okay, yes, hello. I, I'm calling you understand because that's what you're calling yourself. Um, I see that you, you if you'd like to, um, Put your name on 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 there first, please, and um, and then we will definitely get to you. Um, so yes, as I was saying, um, you know, it's it's really difficult to 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 have these kids, especially after the pandemic. Like you rightly said, Wura, they've lost then they've lost the zeal. You know, they have the. I don't I don't want to call it laziness. You know, I don't want to call it laziness. I think it's a case of 
you know, the, the sitting at home, the uncertainty of their own future has led them to, to just not be interested in education. Um, coupled with, unfortunately, um, when we look at um, Nigeria, when we look at Nigeria, we're looking at Africa, you know, you've got, to, even, even here in the UK, you know, you've got the footballers, you know, you get a contract. Um, they're making so much money. And, you know, I remember when Neymar, when they, 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 they gave Neymar so much money and, and people, children were saying, mommy, I'm not going to school anymore. Why? Well, look at Neymar. He didn't go to school. You know, um, it's things like this that is around them. But I think what we need to do as parents is allow these kids to follow their dream. You're so right. Education does, isn't for everybody. Um, but then you've got to do something. So it, 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 it gladdens my heart to hear that, especially in Nigeria, that you're now going to be able to go to a college or, like you said, to do coding, you know, to, so far as they're doing something rather than doing nothing. Everything does not have to be a degree. Everything does not have to be educationally based. You know, you've got some very, very creative people um, in, in, um, in, in Africa, not just Nigeria. I'm going to shout at the whole of Africa. We've got very um, talented people and it's not all based on education. So Mohammed Yassin, yes, I see you've... Um... Okay, okay, I've seen your question and what we can do, we will address that with you after, but um, if you're able to talk about some of your process. Um... Okay, so you're preparing for your GCSEs next year, is that what you're saying? Would you like to unmute Mohammed? Not too personal. Yeah. But what we what we'd like to do is we, we would want to hear from you, but what we always do with I didn't do the disclaimer and I beg your pardon. We do not allow too many personal um inferences or references. So if you want to talk, please generalize your your um your topic. Um and I, I will ask you to unmute and ask your question. If you're not comfortable, then you're you are feel free, feel free, can't get my words out, feel free to type in the chat and I will take it up for you. So the choice is yours, Mohammed Yassin Mia, yeah? Okay, go ahead and ask the question. Yeah, you, you can type the question, it's fine. We, we understand, not everybody wants to. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, good evening. Hello, how are you? Okay, good evening. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah. So, um, are you guys from UK? Okay, we are, we are, we are, yes, we are streaming from the UK, Mohammed. Where are you from? Uh, UK. Right, yes. Go ahead and ask your question. So, uh, next year I'm going to year 11, which is uh, GCSE year. And I'm really stressed about GCSE and I want some free tutors for English, math and science. Okay. okay. I'll start ask how, do you mind me asking, how old are you? It's gone off. Yeah. Gone okay. Off. okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, um, cause if, if it's GCSE, if he's not um, 18, um, we probably will not be able to entertain his, um, his questions or contribution, yeah, yeah? it's fine. Thank He's you. gone off for now, so uh, okay. He's, let's come back in. Oh, has he? Okay. 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 What I think what we'd need to do, um, Mohammed, we will probably need to we'll contact you outside of um here only because the platform today, what we're talking about today, is results that have already um taken place. Um, you're yet to take yours. You're taking yours next year. So what I'm going to ask you to do is um, if you want to type in the chat, drop your details and one of the team will get in touch with you um, and see where we where and how and if we can support you. But we need to know that you are of um, um, you are 18 and above, which I don't think you would be if you're preparing for your GCSEs. Um, and in order to speak to you, we will need some parental consent. So if possible, drop your details in the chat and we will get one of the um, team to speak to you. Okay. All right. 
I just want to welcome um, Adebola. Good evening, sis. You want to unmute and say hi to us? Hi, hi, uh, hi, everyone. I'm really, really sorry. I, you know what? I was so desperate to be on this on early oh, today. It's okay. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, you know, um, it wasn't to be. So, so yeah. sorry. Apologies. That's, that's that's absolutely fine. It's just great to have you on anyway. So that's that's amazing. Um, now that you are on, we would love to rack your brains because we've been having these full-on discussions about obviously the A levels and the results from last week. Um, and we were looking at alternative pathways. We were looking at okay for students who um are looking to do other things and like uh, Wura said just before you came on she was talking from the Nigerian perspective and we were talking about the fact that you know um, she did say that in Nigeria children are now or young people are now being um, allowed to go to colleges like we have here in the UK um, so I don't know if you can shed some light Ancestor Debola on you know other alternative pathways for our young people uh, are you talking about in regards to GCSE? So yes, once they finish GCSEs or A levels, and maybe don't make the um, expected grades. Okay. Because you know, we're looking at the way forward. You know, we want to keep them uh, as positive and as geared up in their destinies as possible. So we're looking at alternatives. I know for a fact because I I used to work in the looked after children, and uh, one of the uh, the issues with uh, uh, one of the well-known factor about children looked at is that their educational achievements is always quite low, despite all of the support that is given by the local authorities. So I know that there isn't any college that would not offer, um, there are, there's something they call functional skills, maths and English. If you don't have GCSE, you could do functional skills, maths and English. Most colleges will offer a course and if young people, because I'm, I know that most universities will not take anyone without a, them passing their English and maths, which is a core subject. However, most colleges will offer a course and alongside they will offer functional skills, maths and English as well uh, to support young people. Now, functional skills, maths and English is in different levels and it obviously can be equivalent to GCSE. But, you know, uh, sometimes that could be used as part of the requirement to get into apprenticeship. So there isn't any grade I don't think anyone would get because that's my experience that colleges aren't able to accommodate either by combining a course with some, some more, uh, some functional skills or what, whatever course that they have or by offering some traineeship, sometimes some local authorities have some traineeship, some business uh, traineeship to help young people to look at different ways of, of uh, um, getting into the workforce or acquiring skills that will help them to get into the workforce. So I do feel the colleges, especially in the UK are so flexible in terms of what they have. And let's not forget that there are other qualifications that people can get apart from GCSE. You know, there are people that are not able to see GCSE and they have an alternative. I cannot remember for the life of me, the name of that qualification, but there are alternative education that people can get and the alternative pathways into getting into a workforce rather than just by GCSE or by A-level. So, I mean, uh, when we're talking about the United Kingdom, I'm not sure about Nigeria, but there are so much support. I was listening to the news this morning and they were saying that the government, uh, there's a deficit in the funding. They found that because of the COVID and the fact that lots of young people can't get into apprenticeship. So there's a lot of uh, young people applying for colleges. And that would mean that there would be a little need for more money and the gov they're asking government for, um, I believe is in the range of 600 billion or something like that. Yeah, to support the educational system in the next few years. So there is quite a lot of support. And when you go to colleges, it, it, you know, I mean, 
I'm, I'm not sure maybe we talked about it. If people have uh, um, some learning difficulties, which is called education health care plan, there is always support for them in school. There's always support for them in colleges. There's always alternative ways. So, I mean, it's not the end result. If you don't pass your GCSE, you can always redo it with support, or you can even go into college and start a course and start doing some the course to to make up the deficit that you don't have in your GCSE grade. Some courses actually don't need that math and English to do them. I mean, you know, and, and I'm telling you now, I don't do nails, but people that do nails and, and air, they, they do make quite a lot of money in, in terms of self employed people so there's yes. I, and i'm not saying that that's the way to go but if people are talented in those okay. fields they might not, not necessarily need the statutory subject and they might still get support when they go to college so it, it's just it's, it's phenomenal the support available oh awesome thank you so much for that um thank you so much for that um Adewala, that was well you know um articulated um, and another thing I would love to throw out there is for organizations, especially within our community, um, please put yourselves out there, yeah? There are so many schemes that, especially during the pandemic, that the government threw out. The Kickstart is one of them. Um, and through the Kickstart, you know, the, the, the Kickstart, it offers um, um, employability to young people, yeah? For you to be able to help them train them you know and there is nothing more rewarding than taking somebody on training them up to a certain point where you can then employ them in your own establishment you know it's just like i i look at it like i i have a baby and i raise that child and then i you know and that's how we need to and if we want to help these young people this is the, the way we need to be thinking so when you see such schemes please don't think of just the money you can make from the scheme because that's not what it's about. But think of you know, how you can grow an individual, two individual, three or four. Um, we, we jumped on it. And the reason we jumped on it is because you know, Saffron has always been about you know, empowering our young people. And we're a safeguarding organization anyway. So in any way that we can help these young people, that is what we are about. Um, was it easy? No, we had to, we had a, it was very hard. We had months of writing proposals because you don't just get this. You need to make yourself, um, you need to be viable. You need to be able to say to the government, we can do this. Um, and not, it's not like I did say, it's not just about the money. And I'm going to put this out there to employers. It might not be, some of you are not going to want to hear this, but please stop using these young people to hold up your businesses. That is not what these schemes are about. These schemes are to train them um, and make them experience so they stop being turned away for lacking experience. Um, I am happy to say that four of our young learners will be starting with us on Monday, the 23rd of August. And um, it's, been, it's been a couple of months in the works. It's been a lot of hard work. Um, we've been doing countless interviews, but we've picked four amazing young people who will be starting with Saffron Sack, which is um, our safeguarding the African and Caribbean Center in, up in Gillingham in Kent. Um, and they are, they are very you know, willing to come on board. Um, and we will be updating you. So this is the kickstart scheme, which the government have rolled out. Um, Saffron Sacup is a part of it. We are um, doing, um, we are um, training for young people under the Kickstart scheme. Um, and we hope that, you know, we can encourage organizations out there, you know, feel free to ask us how it's going. I believe, I do believe I spoke to somebody, an accounts manager in Kickstart, who said they will be rolling out a second phase. So guys, always update you know educate yourselves go online we found it nobody brought it to us you know because we are always looking for how we can take these kids to the next level these young people to the next level so um that is just something i wanted to put out there and to say you know we can only do this if we work together um just without much ado i want to it's 737 um i want to just say um a 
massive welcome to um, Joyce Ellenson, who's one of our educators. Joyce is in the house. Good evening. It's been too long. It's so lovely to see your, at least it's nice to see your name, but I would love to see your face. It's been ages. I think I've forgotten what you look like now. <laughs> how, are, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you. Good evening. So nice to have you on board. It's so good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> good evening. Welcome, sis. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to hand over to you, Yemi, so that you can um, take can I, over from can I Can I just oh. say something very quickly, Yemi? Yes, yes Adebola. Okay, uh, I think that it's very important that we say it out, because I was talking to one of my young people today, mm -hmm. and I was saying to her, she's going to be 18 in a couple of days. So. I guess what it is, is it's very clearly uh, the law that uh, the free education for children is up to the age of 19. That's right. However, if a young person gets into college at 18 this year and they're doing a two year course because they started the course before they're 19, they will finish the course after. Because I think we need to be very uh, uh, sharing that information with parents because some parents don't know free education is finished, you know, in terms of adult education, yeah. you have to pay for it once you're over 19 and you have to get your grant to do it. So I think it's very important that we're, we're sharing information with parents and with young people that use the opportunity that you have to skill yourself up with obviously getting yourself into a program and don't think that the time, because years ago you could be 25 and then you get back, you decide that you want to go to, to college and then you still get support. But the, And there's still going to be support for you yeah. past 19 but I guess make use of the best opportunity you have and yeah. and make it and if you're anyone that you know you're thinking obviously the pandemic has stopped you you're going to be you're 18 this year you want to do a course don't be stopped go for it now this is your last course September is coming do something if it's past two years it will carry on because you started before you're 19 I just wanted to put it out there brilliant thank, thank you so much for that um Adebola. Okay, Yemi. Oh, well, I don't really have very much to say, but I really just wanted to say thank you, um, um, Sadebola, for that, because um, like you said, there is so much information. Before you came on, we had that discussion that a lot of parents need to be more enlightening about the processes um, of, um, of the education system and the processes that these young people um, have to go through. And if they don't understand it, then they can't really support them. So um, we will continue to look at um, maybe some edu maybe get some educationists to come over and give us outlines, you know, how, how, how it works from, from, from preschool right up to getting a university um, place. And I think that is going to be probably get some people to come on next week and give us some more information around that. And hopefully Amoti will find somebody who, um, from Ireland also, and we'll probably ask our um, person in Scotland. So we have a, a you know, a, a, a helicopter view of what the processes are around the country. Um, in that same vein, without stopping, I just really want to say welcome, Joyce Ellenson. Um, Joyce is um, um, intellect consultancy training um, um, professional, and um, she also has an NGO which she runs in Nigeria. Um, if she has one minute to tell us about that, but then also then please, please give us all the information you have because this woman is loaded. If you're looking for the educationist, um, she's also now, oh yes, yeah, so my sister got promoted. Congratulations, sis. She's also <laughs> now the curriculum, is it direct sources? Please update us. Let okay. Us know. All right. Oh dear. I wasn't expecting to be introduced like this. Uh, uh, um, we can't let you pass without <laughs> appreciating you. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure um, Yem may have updated everybody that joins us for regularly that I'm a very strong supporter of Safeguarding. So um, I want to say that I, I was very, very thrilled when she started this journey. I supported her. And then all of a sudden I disappeared because I got snowed under with a heavy COVID responsibilities at work. So currently I'm a senior curriculum manager at Lewisham College. And obviously I work with a lot of 16 to 18 year olds and also um, adults, some are vulnerable, some are not. 
So I'm very, very much within the education system in the UK. Uh, it's my 19th year in further education in the UK. So uh, I mean, looking at the uh, theme for today, I'm really very sorry I joined late. It's, it's, it's been really, really busy at work today. We're doing enrollments. But looking at the theme based on what uh, she sent me yesterday about uh, uh, results day exams and things like that. I don't know whether people had joined before and maybe maybe missing information I'm going to share now, but nonetheless, because it's been recorded, it could still be shared online. So um, for, for a lot of young people, whether they've got their GCSEs or not, there is always the different pathways that they can tow. Some of them can go through apprenticeships or some of them can retake uh, basic subjects, core subjects like maths, English, and science. And some of them can actually do this if their sixth form, if the sixth form sector of their school permits them or, and, but if not, they can go into a further education college to do the reset. So there is now a government agenda that all core subjects, maths, English, and science particularly, are taken seriously. So the further education sector is entrusted with the responsibility to ensure that whether they pass at grade four and above or not, we should still be there to support them. So a student, a young person might decide they want to uh, go into health and social care business studies, a beauty therapy, uh, photography, construction, um, um, early year studies. If they join any college of their choice or join a sixth form, they are mandated to present their GCSE grades, English and maths, if they don't have a grade four, they will be expected to receipt. So uh, the receipt, the, the receipt registration is going on right now, and it's going to it's going to close by the twenty fourth of September. If your if your child is uh, did not achieve their maths and English, for instance, make sure that that child, if they've got a grade three, is registered for a receipt. And that receipt will take place in the first week of November. A lot of parents are not aware of this. Unfortunately, they make their children enroll for the whole year. But the receipt is such a good provision in the UK education system in the sense that if under a normal COVID, if under a normal year, the November series usually has lower points into which students can fall into a grade four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So all the award bodies use this to capture learners who have missed the grade four originally. And of course, it's a way of um, incentivizing them to, to study harder. And as soon as they get their results in January, it opens up opportunities for them to apply for maybe a February course in the university, for instance, or maybe apply for another course in, the, in, a, in a college. So, but many parents are not aware of this. And parents need to be very clear with the colleges uh, by ensuring that they have an email confirmation that that child has been registered for that receipt. The colleges may not necessarily make provision for the heavy revision between now and November. So I always advise parents, go and get your child a private tutor to tutor your child in maths and English and science. You will spend a lot of money, but by the end of October, it will come to an end and the child writes the exam and by January, you will get a result. The results that are released in January are usually really, really good. Every school is always holding on, every college always holds on to those results because we can claim that uh, we, our achievement rates have increased and we actually also use that to attract funding from the national government. So um, if, if, if a young person feels under pressure to revise towards the November receipt, there's nothing wrong in allowing that child to sit the program for the whole year. It means that the parent needs to constantly remind that their young one to revise, revise, revise. We cannot leave everything into the hands of the teacher or the institution. Teachers do try to teach, but of course there are lots of forces. Sometimes there's disruption in the class, no matter how, how expertly we can manage a classroom situation, there's still disruption. And of course, COVID being a very disruptive uh, part of our lives right now, we are telling young, young, young ones to think about creating their own revision schedule. 
make sure your child revises, go into their room, agree a time when they should not have their mobile phones on them. If there is an e-learning uh, platform that the school or college has given them, they should be on it constantly. Ha ask the college or the school to also give you login so that you can check the progress of your child. All these things are possible. There are some fantastic platforms like eTracker. There are parent logins, but parents never log in because they don't know. So always communicate regularly with your son or daughter school or, or college to make sure that that child is doing very well. Not only in a receipt case, in anything they're doing, BTEC level three health and social care, BTEC level three business, whatever they're doing, always communicate regularly. The communication indicates to the college that the parent has an active interest in that young one's educational uh, journey. But sometimes we're so bombarded with work, with bills, with travel, with family, we really need to make time out. Even if it's an hour a week you take to discuss with your young one how things are going, please feel free to do so. Take them out. If you're going to an event, we need to, we need to, we need to um, see what we can do to inspire our young ones. If you're going to a museum, if you're going to a party, if you're going to the beach, if you're going to see friends, create opportunities to inspire your young ones. Don't just leave them at home to be on their phones watching TV and Netflix. Take them out to, fun to functions, to events, and let them meet other people. Let them grow their network. Let them develop self-confidence. Let them develop good communication skills. And let them you know, develop their creativity. So if you don't do that, it's as if you're leaving your child to do their own thing and you're doing your own thing, you're enjoying life, but they are not. So these are the sort of things that kind of lead to depression when there are no sources of inspiration. At the moment, many of us are unable to travel because for instance, I speak for myself, even if I've got the funds, I'm not ready to pay for a COVID test in and out of the country. So whatever travel I've booked, I've had it canceled, I will, I will make use of it next year. So my kids have had nothing to look forward to this year, but what am I doing? I'm taking them out. I'm taking them out all the time, even if it's to shopping, to get them to look at um, goods, uh, get them to decide on which one is value for money, ask them questions and, and engage in meaningful conversations. Think about their ambitions. Think about what they like, what they can do, what opportunities there are. You know, is it media? Is it pharmacy? Is it medicine? The other day, somebody sent me a link about an aviation industry established by a black man who was looking specifically for BAME youths to come and train as uh, pilots and, um, and experts within the aviation industry. I found that extremely inspirational. Hardly would you find BAME people at the top end within the aviation industry. And I shared that widely within my social network. And one of my friends on said he's very interested. So please, it's a time for us to actually engage more with them. And we want to remove all these barriers. We want to um, do what we can to, to limit mental ill health. Mental ill health is not when you, you're sectioned. Sometimes it develops very gradually. So we need our children to go out, enjoy the sunshine and enjoy life and you know enjoy what they want to do. And we need them to access all kinds of provisions. Even if they're not interested, get them to read up on it. If they decide that's not for them, that's fine. Get them to, to, to look at things that they will interest them. Gone are the days when we impose our own <laughs> ambitions on our children. No, so we are here in the UK. This is an advanced economy. There are lots of opportunities. And by the way, Black Lives Matters, if you have noticed, have, has opened up opportunities for being people. Have you noticed on TV lots of adverts? What are you seeing? What kind of races are you seeing in those adverts? My husband and I were talking about it the other day. We were shocked that so many Black people seem to be in media these days because every organization is trying to tick off their BAME, their BAME list. So please, we need to open up those opportunities to our youths. We need to make sure they enjoy life. We need to engage with their teachers. If they're in university, we need to keep an eye on them. We need to call them regularly. Or if they feel we're disturbing them, agree when you can call them and continue to engage them. 
and pray that God opens up a path for them and that, that they can succeed in the future and also participate effectively in global economy and that they can contribute effectively to their communities. You're muted, Giz, you're speaking. Sorry, it's my computer. I don't know why it does that. Sorry. Thank you so much. That was, I mean, I, I was expecting that, but yeah, that was, it was amazing to hear from you. There is one question I would like to ask and to see if you can um, help us forward. So for, uh, I happen to have been opportune to speak to quite a lot of, especially A-level students. Okay. Now for those who did not quite make the grades, hmm. okay what you know how can we help them what is the support that is out okay. there for them their yeah. families now so those who didn't quite make the make the grades for the courses they want to go for will mm -hmm. will be pleased to know that there are foundation degrees right. for those courses um, i mean the other day somebody was saying to me that there is a an apprenticeship for nurses and i thought what seven years and look, let's think about it. If, 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 a, if a child, if, if, if a young girl is not engaging academically at all, but they fancy nursing, maybe that's the right route for that girl. If a girl, if a, if a young girl is academically able and she's got all her A-levels, she can do a three-year nursing degree and have a degree. But if a girl is not engaged academically, but she loves to care for people, maybe that's the route for her. It's better she's doing a seven year apprenticeship than doing nothing, nothing. Sure. or getting involved in all sorts of things, you know, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So mm -hmm. foundation degrees are all over the place. There are There is a university in East London where they actually offer a level three course. I think it's the University of East London where they offer a level three course so that when you, you, when you enroll in the course or you complete the course, you get an automatic ad admission into a degree course. Parents are not aware of this and they don't advertise it so much. And of course, there are also HND courses and HNC courses. By the way, HNC is lower than HND. Yeah. HND is lower than foundation degree. And of course, foundation degree is lower than um, yes. a degree, a taught degree course. So there are paths that our children can tow if they've not made the grades they want. Some of them whose parents are affluent might decide, okay, I didn't make the grade, I want to go on a gap year. If you can afford it, why not? Let them go on a gap year. Um, some, some, some girls, I know, I know some girls who went to top grammar schools uh, around where we live, Townley Girls Grammar School, they said they wanted to come away from the academic regals and wanted to do beauty therapy because they find it therapeutic. So they were, they were enrolled on level three beauty courses. So please, we need to open up our eyes, go into the internet and look for opportunities. There are opportunities, but there are also, at the moment, uh, the, the national government is looking for volunteers, even paid workers, um, to work in schools and colleges to support young learners who have missed out on learning. In, in my college alone, a hundred thousand pounds funding was given us where we were asked to use it to um, to, uh, to recruit young people who would act as mentors to, to students within the college. And they were paid 30 pounds an hour, 30 pounds an hour. So some of these young people decided, okay, I'm gonna keep, I'm going to defer my admission. I'm just going to, to do what I can to contribute to, to society. So, so some of them came in, we, we gave them 10, uh, 10, week, 10 hour weekly contracts and they worked with our existing learners and they were on 30 pounds an hour. That's 300 pounds a week. And that, that's something. So all sorts of COVID funding is all over the place that people are not aware of. So there are lots of opportunities. Please don't forget there's a HNC program, the HND program, the foundation program, the level three course in selected universities like UEL. Um, and of course, there are lots of job opportunities or voluntary opportunities. But those voluntary opportunities are actually paying minimum costs. And of course, there are jobs that target young people to support fellow young people. The other day, somebody was saying to me in Crisis Six from College Illusion that they're looking for mentors. They just call them mentors, young people who've had very good GCSEs and they were employed, obviously on a fixed term contract. So, also, so if, if, if you can't tow the, the path academically, you can tow the path, path within voluntary employment, or you can go for, for these other um, lower level uh, courses that would lead up into um, a degree course. 
Awesome. Thank you. That that's that's so good to know because obviously we are talking about the way forward, you know. And when we started the segment, you know, we said obviously there would have been people who got the desired um, results, and obviously there will be people who did not get the de desired results. Um, is that the end of the world? No, it's not. No, it's not. Um, you know, we need to be pushing it out there that there are other pathways positive pathway. So as you said, the HNC, the HND, the foundation, the level three course in some universities, which you actually mentioned, the University of East London, um, the voluntary work, uh, you said Lewisham College was looking for mentors and they paid them what, 30 pounds an hour, which I think is absolutely wonderful for a young person. Yeah. Um, so um, I think what we're going to do, we're going to put some of these on our website and we'll put them on our social media pages um, and it's nice to have people like yourself um, who are in the fold because there's nothing like hearing from an actual professional so it's not sensationalism it's not just what I've gone and read up but another thing I would love to also put out there is um, the, 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 the government websites there is a lot of information on the government websites and I think as parents we need to start getting more in, involved um, in, in looking on the websites to see what is out there um, for us. And, I, and, and I, I just hope that, that that is something, you know, we can encourage. Um, we, we, we definitely do as an organization, but I think we need to, you know, our, our parents need to get a lot more aware because like you said, Joyce, there's a lot of stuff out there which is not known and parents are missing out and therefore the young people are, are missing out. I did, well, I think you raised your hand. Yes, you did. Um, I wanted to ask uh, Joyce to, uh, thanks for that, Joyce. That was really uh, quite helpful. Um, I just wanted you to um, shed some, maybe share some information in regards to the current uh, uh, um, strive for government, because I mean, with the pandemic and, and the effect is had on education, there's so many, uh, so much uh, support being offered in schools, uh, and 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 governments are driving this initiative to get uh, young people into a site where they can log in. Parents may not be aware of those sites that their children can log in and get some extra support. I just I don't know. Maybe you can shed some light on that and maybe mention yeah. some of those those initiatives because especially with the way the pandemic has gone and the effect is had on the education. Government is yeah. now pushing hard uh, because the next set of GCSE will be exam based and A level. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of support so that parents are aware of it and they can start supporting their children because what schools would do is give them the login details and the children would not log in to That's do true. those pods. I mean, there's GCSE pods and different initiatives. I just wanted you to shed okay. some light on that. Yeah. So the first thing was a digital poverty that was identified earlier on last year uh, at the start of the, at the start of the lockdown, not the pandemic, yeah. So, you know, we held lots of meetings and we found out that some of our students, some of our very, very able and keen students were not logging in simply because of digital poverty. So we, uh, we generated a list of learners who struggled to access um, equipment, you know, iPads or laptops. So we were able to get a massive funding from the GLA, Greater London Authority, I think the funding came from Sidiq Khan. So um, laptops were bought and configured and issued to students. Students were uh, allowed to take it home up until the end of the academic year. So that is that's is still going on. That's, a, that's one of the first support mechanisms. Uh, the second mechanism is um, uh, funding. So there's uh, allocated um, COVID funding the COVID funding we received, I'm talking about Lewisham College, but I'm sure that in other schools, there's probably a lot more because schools get more investment than for further education colleges. So COVID funded. So maybe maybe if if you if you're so frustrated and you really need to speak to the school, you can mention, you can make reference. It's within your legal rights to make reference to COVID funding. So the COVID funding was issued to the college very, very quickly. Um, at a point we heard it was 300,000 pounds and another time we heard it was, uh, there was another 100,000 pounds. You know, we're, we're, we're talking thousands of pounds, you know, in six figure sums, possibly even half a million, I don't know. But um, what the college decided to do with it when we were consulted, 
was to address missed learning, you know, missed learning in the sense that some students did not engage online, they did not engage in remote learning. And uh, when homework was issued, many, maybe some did not do it for, for, for genuine reasons. And when we resumed from remote teaching to face-to-face -face teaching, some students could not turn up for genuine reasons, which include being in isolation because somebody in the family had tested positive for COVID or recovering from COVID or testing for, for COVID. So these were genuine reasons. So what they did was after the student came in, after the student tested negative, you know, all these young people, they always recover from COVID anyway. Thankfully, there were, there were no deaths. There was a death of one student who had serious underlying problems anyway, severely disabled students. So that wasn't unexpected, but very sad, I have to say. But all our students who caught COVID all recovered very quickly. A lot of them within, within two weeks. So when they tested negative, they came into the college, we had tons and tons of lateral flow test kits. In fact, as I speak to you, I think I have about six at home. Everybody was given lateral flow test kits. That's another funding, I have to say. So once they come in, they they once they resume once they resumed face to face teaching, they were allocated learning mentors. These learning mentors were recruited specifically to support learners who had missed learning. So their job was to call the students into a small beautiful room that had a computer, get them to bring their homework, set that settle them down, and get them to do their homework on the very, uh, very uh, favorable circumstances. And we found out that the students were turning in very, very good pieces of homework of, of, of high standard, simply because that environment was there. They were nurtured and encouraged. Believe it or not, we also had drinks and snacks for the students. The COVID funding was visibly spent. We could see that. So um, we had, so, so we had um, the laptops, the learning mentors, and then, a lot of organizations sprang up. These are educational organizations who were happy to go into different schools and colleges to provide one-to-one -one support for identified students. I'm sure you know that, I don't know whether you've ever done this, whether you've ever um, got your child a teacher to teach your, teacher, to teach your child privately. Yes. I don't know whether you know the amount it, it, they, they charge. It's between 25 and 30 pounds an hour. It's a very expensive provision. There is no school in the world that does one-to-one. -one. The only time we'll do a one-to-one -one is if a child is assessed as um, having some learning needs, maybe dyslexia or dyspraxia or global, uh, global uh, delay and things like that. So this company, there's a company called Get Further. You can Google them, Get Further. So they approached the college and said that they had been funded to, to support maths and English, and they had been allocated funded by the government. All the college needed to do was to sign up with them. We were shocked. <laughs> so we signed up with them. So what they do, they go into different classes and then um, do a short presentation, open up a QR code, get the students to take a picture of the QR code, which opens up a Google form, and students are able to enter their details to indicate their interest. So they didn't do a one-to-one -one session, they did three to one. That is still a very, uh, a very um, valuable provision. You know, I don't teach in a class, I don't teach a class of three, usually it's 15 minimum, you know. So our students were able to access that provision. We also allocated rooms, you know, so students did one to one to three session, I have to say. They, they provided snacks uh, and they enjoyed six hours of a specific maths and English. So that company goes from college to college to, to, um, to support uh, GCSE maths and English students. At a point, we said to them, if you can do this, can you also take a look at our functional maths provision? Functional maths is a lower level qualification um, in, it's not a substitute for GCSE, but it's it's um, it's a nationally recognized qualification that is about 40% 40, 40 of the GCSE. So that was that was another provision. So there are there are tons of other other provisions. You know, we provided taxis, 
there was quite a lot of emphasis on safeguarding, a lot of emphasis where students had anxieties, students were abused. A lot of the abuse is around neglect, not necessarily physical abuse or emotional abuse. It was all around neglect. We offered counseling services, we offered services. All of this was extra funds. We had to bring in extra staff, you know, um, so, uh, bereavement services. Um, and then of course, the one that really, really impressed me is um, period poverty. See, so I didn't actually realize that until I went into the toilet. We have huge toilets where we've got little cubicles where people could, could go in individually to, to use the toilets. And as soon as you come out, you'll find huge baskets of um, sanitary towels and um, what's it called? What's the other one? And tampons. And yeah, and tampons. So they actually, there, there was a note on the, on the toilet wall saying, part of COVID funding, please help yourself to sanitary towels and take as many as possible. If we, if we run out, please come and see us. And do you know that a lot of ladies were helping themselves, which points to period, real period poverty. So there's quite a lot of incentives government has put out there. Um, lots of deadlines needed to be shifted to accommodate all the disruption caused by COVID. So um, we had to write references to anybody looking for a job very, very quickly. We had a two day turnaround. And um, there's also been a huge recruitment drive for teachers, a huge recruitment drive for education uh, uh, personnel. I mean, the, the provision is just unbelievable. We, we also had um, a, 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 a prize giving day for the most resilient student, the most resilient staff, the most adaptable. You know, everybody was rewarded in one way or the other because it was such a stressful, extremely challenging time. So I'm sure there's more that I can tell you, but that's what I can think of right now. Please feel free to go into gov.uk and uh, maybe type in education and also go into UCAS. UCAS also has all sorts of provisions for students who are really, really struggling. Any student who may have lost one parent or, or two parents were given hardship fund grants to live on, to be honest. So there's all sorts of, of, of incentives coming through to arrest to arrest COVID. In fact, at the moment, there's a campaign that next year's GCSEs would have to test 70% of the curriculum, which I think makes sense. So we shouldn't be under pressure to teach 100% of the GCSE curriculum. We teach 70% and 70% is assessed. And if they pass a the 70%, then that's 100% then. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Yes. So I hope I'm able to answer that question. I'm sure there's more that, that can be added on. If I come wow. across more information, I will pass it on to you, uh, Miss Yemi. Thank you, Joyce. That was loaded, fully loaded, but, you know, very needed. And I'm sure that even when we send the recorded version out, we will be impacting on a lot of families, a lot of young people. So um, we will be doing this um, topic for the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. So if you if you can join us, that would be amazing because, you know, we've always said um, on here that we always want professionals to come out because then we know that the information that is being passed is it's it's factual and um, it's real it's not fabricated so thank you so much for your professional input um whilst we're on i would just like to recognize um yemi c jenkins in the house mbe good evening yemi c thank you for joining you said you would and you did so it's lovely to see you on this evening um as we're talking about um gcse's um a levels and the way forward and I know that was quite a lot of information from Joyce, but um, we have typed quite a few of the nuggets already um, in, 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 on Facebook. And we will be putting on our social media pages. Um, and, you know, if there are things that people remember after we've finished the show, before we come on again next week, Wednesday, to continue, um, please just drop us a line. We are, we've always said it, we are 24 7 and we will pick up. Um, you know, everything and anything. Um, and like I did say um, on the 23rd, when our young people will be starting under the government kickstart scheme, you know, we are going to be very, very open and honest about the progress because what we would love to see is more organizations taking up 
the baton, taking up that baton um, so that we can help these young people. You know, we did say that the A-levels and the GCSEs are not the only path. Some of these young people that we've taken on, one of the, one of the young ladies did not even finish her GCSEs. Um, but we, we took her on because there was something we saw in her that was amazing, that was magical. And we know she's going to, with training, she's going to be um, a, a, um, an amazing, amazing um, 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 learner. So please, let, let's not give up on the young people. I know, uh, Wura, you said um, back home in Nigeria, there's this, I think it's not just in Nigeria, even here, but I don't want to call them lazy. These are not lazy young people. These are disillusioned, you know. These are very disillusioned young people who were hit with the most craziest of periods you can think of. Now, even myself as an adult, the pandemic threw me. So can you imagine what has happened to these young people? They've gone from being, you know, possibly not even totally certain about what is happening. And then COVID came and knocked them out of the park. So please let, let's um let, let's be there for them. Let's step for them. Let's let's stand in for them. And um we can only do this if we come together. And like we are here today, we have Joy on, we have Adebola, a social worker, you know, Joy's in education. This is what we need to do. We need to collaborate. We need to come together, share ideas, put them out there. There could be parents watching now who had no idea about some of the things that have been shared today. Okay, yeah, Missy Jenkins, I am gonna ask you to unmute and lend your voice, good evening. Um, good evening. Apologies for joining late. Um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say um, thank you to Joyce for starters. Thank you very much. That was really, really informative. Um, I was just typing because I wasn't too sure if there's time to take this. Um, I was yes. just typing in the um, comments um, chat that can we have her back? And then we will. I mean, as you will see that I posted, um, I shared something on Facebook. Yeah, we, we need to have her back. And then we need to share this um, across the community because I know very well, just like every other aspects um, that our people lack the information they need and information is power. So I am begging um, if we can have her back and maybe just dedicate that to, um, dedicate that to her so that we can have time for Q and A. Yeah, definitely. We Thank can you. Definitely. Uh, Joyce, I'm, I'm throwing that to you, please. You need to give us. Okay. I do promise I, I will be here while that theme is being discussed and if any other education themes. I mean, Yemi knows how passionate about, I am about education. Yeah. And can I just say, and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that Giz mentioned that she as a strong adult was affected by COVID. I, I was also affected by COVID, I have to say. I might, I might be looking as if I'm a strong woman with makeup, well-fed, honestly. <laughs> uh, I, 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 have just, I have just developed some resilience. You know, obviously I've had, I've had four weeks off and I feel recharged mentally, but it, it hasn't been an easy journey during this time. But I, you know, I thank God. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. Yeah. I'm very happy to see everybody here bouncing, bouncing back. So I, I will be here, I promise. The only problem is I may not be able to join at, at, the, at the beginning. At That's the fine. So maybe if you can dedicate the last half hour like we've done today. Beautiful. Um, then um, then I'll, I'll, be, I'll be happy to join. And I'm sorry, I will, I'm just looking at the Facebook, um, is it's it's being is it's not being recorded, is it? It, it is being recorded. Is it live. Yes. Yes. Or, or right, maybe I'll, I'll 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 drop a comment and trigger any questions, and I'll be happy brilliant. to post it. So can we can we agree on, on next week Wednesday? Next week Wednesday. Honestly, for now I'll say yes. So half half seven. We will dedicate seven thirty, and the mm. rest, even if it's an hour. We'll dedicate from 7.30 to yourself um, okay. and that way so that obviously there will be a lot of questions um, that maybe parents and young people have. 
which we would be so grateful if you would, um, you know, answer on that last part of the yeah, segment. That's fine. I, I, I promise I'll, I'll be the awesome. next. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm so Thank happy you that, so you much, know, you're, you're, you're well. So happy. To, I haven't seen you for so long. I mean, I do see bits of you, but, you know, to see you in the flesh like this, it's good. And we, we do need to look out for each other. We do need to ask. We, we will have her poster, Yemisi. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Yemisi is I feel Yemisi, I feel like I'm sat here in my room and I can feel Yemisi pushing me and saying, yes, yes. <laughs> Yemisi, I'm, I'm going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to um, definitely, um, I, I hope you don't mind, Joyce, we're going to have your uh, poster up for next week. Oh, we okay. I'm sure up. Yemi has various pictures of me. I, don't worry. I got you. I've, I've got put you. on a bit of weight. So oh, if you want to please, my please, latest please. Look at all pandemic. Of us. Look at all of us. <laughs> Two dress sizes up. Yeah, we'll get that poster out ASAP. We'll get that poster out this week, to, uh, before the end of this week, so that we can share it. And for everybody who is on now, please, we want teachers on, we want the young people, we want as many educators on as possible because our community is really that we are we are we are suffering. But guess what? We are suffering in silence. Mm. Um, I think they need to know that you know this. We 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 have an organization like Saffron. Who have people, you know, like yourselves, who yes. are out there to raise awareness, to give guidance and support and advice the way that has been happening today. So please, 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 Sister Adebola, please share for us. Get all your social worker colleagues on. Um, let me see the same. Um, and the officer Sister Joyce. I mean, I know you can come with a battalion of people. Um, but yeah, we do need to be talking more. We do need to be raising awareness. So next week, Wednesday, we will be back here, same time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. But from 7.30, we will have Joyce Ellenson on taking your questions um, and answering them um, live um, on the show. Okay, so um, thank you. I just want to say thank you to ev each and every one of us who have come on to th this evening. So yeah, Missy Jenkins, NBE, Wura, Omoti, all the way from Ireland with your kings and queens, 4Gs, thank you. Sister Adebola, as always, you, you always come on and you blow us away. Thank you so much for your input. Bolanle Shegilola, all the way from Nigeria, you gave us an insight into how it is out there, yourselves and Wura. And you know, we are very, 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 very interested to know what's happening out in Nigeria. It's important, you know, it's very important because don't forget we cross exchange. Some of the children come, the young people come to the United Kingdom. So it's always nice for us to be understanding how it is there and seeing how we can support, if we can support you. Um, we will be going out there next month. Um, I thought I'd just throw it out there. And so we'll probably be, we'll be live from Nigeria in September. <laughs> so um, yeah, we, 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 we will definitely um, be hooking up with some of you um, when, when we go out there. So thank you once again, Joyce. And hope to see you, not hope, we will definitely be seeing you next week, Wednesday. Please take care of yourselves. Everybody stay safe. Um, the, the pandemic is, yes, we're all out there, but you know we still have to remember to stay safe and do what the government are asking us to do. Um, and yeah, we just hope to see everybody back again next week, Wednesday, the same time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And we will have the flyer out. I want to say thank you to everybody that joined us on Facebook. Wow, you were buzzing. Bello, Bukola, Shaikemi, thank you. Nana was on. Thank you, Nana. We had Edward Adewale on. Thank you, Edward. Um, and Kamara Emmanuel left us. And Tiviki left us. She took an excuse. Um, so thank you to everybody. And the young gentleman, Mohammed, has kind of disappeared but I'm hoping that um, we, we were able to answer his question on, on Facebook. So thank you everybody and hope to see you all next week. Have a good evening. We say good night and thank you so much for joining us um, on the segment today. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you. And just to say that um, uh, Adebola did um, respond to Mohammed in the chats. Okay, yes. awesome. And she gave awesome. him some um, advice Brilliant. and um, signposted him. So that was awesome. Great. Thanks. All thanks right. for That's good. Thank you. Good, okay. good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you. God bless.